G'day everyone and welcome to another episode, the second one of Grandma's Handbag. Uh, my name is Dean and um, along with a handbag here, really happy to have you all with us. Uh, thanks to all the subscribers, um, everyone who's been able to watch the video, uh, my first one and introduction, uh, really appreciate it. Big thumbs up to everyone. Um, cheers for the comments. Um, been really inspiring, really appreciate it. Um, got to say a big shout out to Pete, a uh, good old mate of mine. He was the um, first co conspirator of uh, Grandma's Handbag. A uh, bit of a backstory. We were um, uh, originally together as um, kind of a segment, a radio segment, and also a late night radio show going on about 15 years ago now. So, um, that was a Sydney radio station, 2SCR, that we were on. Um, and, yeah, just wanted to say thanks to uh, Pete for the initial kick in the ass back then and also the um, the words of support. And, um, uh, yeah, thanks, Pete. I uh, hope we can get you on here sometime. Could be uh, could be good to see if we can revisit some of the weirdness of the handbag uh, that it used to be. Uh, all right. Um... Grandma's handbag. We're back, uh, back from, or not been on to, but back from Japan. So I'm really, really excited to um, to let you know uh, just what I was able to pick up there. And uh, first things first, I guess we've got Grandma's little helper, which is a lovely Japanese whiskey, the Yamazaki single malt. Uh, there's no age statement on this one. But um, it's a lovely little piece of work. I'll leave it over here next to our good man, Mr. Hendrix. Cheers. And cheers to all you there as well. Mmm. Cheers indeed. Beautiful stuff. Really well made. Mmm. That gets me right in the mood for this. Um... I'm really excited guys, there's uh, a whole bunch of vinyl here I was able to pick up on a two week trip through Japan. Um, should just dig straight into it I suppose. Um, I'm, I'm listing these or showing you these uh, roughly from cheapest to most expensive. I really don't know why. Um, am I trying to justify these purchases? I'm not sure. Anyway, we'll get into it. Look, um, cheapest a lot. 100 yen, a uh, bit over in it, one Australian dollar, a fine um, Gorillas Clint Eastwood 12-inch um, single. You can't leave that uh, lying around. I found this one and probably the next couple as well in the um, in a temple market uh, just outside of Osaka. Uh, it was a great find, um, the market. And uh, yeah, re really good stuff to look around and uh, see. The next one I got... Uh, Elvis Costello this year's model. This is a new one to me. I haven't heard this um, even though I've bought it. I've got a couple around uh, this era. I've got uh, Get Happy and... Um, oh, geez, I always forget the name uh, with the elephants on it. Um, you know, I should put it in the uh, in the links or that anyway. Armed Forces, I think it is. Um, so I'm hoping... I think this should be up there with that... Um, uh, let's hope anyway. I've read good things about it. If you guys uh, anyone out there is a fan of this one, let me know I'd uh, love to hear your uh, comments and thoughts on what to look for. It's um Got a Japanese insert in there. It's on uh, radar label um, Interestingly, I'd say this one wins the um, The worst condition award are we allowed to um, to um, award that anyway uh, that said, even the uh, the vinyl is still great. Uh, there's a little bit of a seam split, but other than that, you know, really, really happy uh, to have Elvis with me as well. Next one um, is another um, market find, and it's Wings, Back to the Egg, their last album. Uh, again, another one I haven't uh, haven't really heard. Um, I know it is their last one. Um, if anyone out there wants to uh, let me know what I'm in for with this, uh, any words of encouragement or, you know, let me know what you think about this one. I'm interested to see. 
back to the egg you've got uh, sunny side up and over easy on there again a Japanese insert uh, sitting at the behind so look both of those last two are about four to five Australian dollars um, really couldn't leave them sitting there you know something interesting this one wasn't much more um, Saint Etienne um, 12 inch EP Avenue um, yeah, it just this is just a classic um, slow motion pop song. I think it goes for about seven and a half minutes or so. Uh, I think there's an arrangement on there by Van Dyke Parks, uh, who we all know from Pet Sounds and his solo career. So, um, yeah, beautiful string arrangements on this one. Um, very happy to have it. Um, yeah, great stuff. Next one, very interesting. The Carter family, um, southeast to the southwest, a Decca Hillbilly series. This was put out in the mid 70s in Japan, uh, from what I've found. It's the only one, believe it or not, that I've picked up that has the classic Japanese obi strip. Um, so I don't know whether that makes me a good or a bad collector or what, but you know what? I'm not too fast, truth be told. This one here was you know under 10 Australian dollars um, you know a bit of a blurb on the back there the the vinyl itself lovely condition you know I just love these old recordings um, it, it's just like hearing history um, there, there's a lot of soul and in, in the uh, in the grooves of these records as well so stoked to have that one um, yeah next one um, is an Aussie EP, Auto Haze, Mild Steel Flat. This is an early 90s one on uh, Summershine Records. You can see uh, right there, there's a limited numbering of 500. And if you can see, you've got some signatures on the back there. Um, I've heard one or two things of Auto Haze. Um, I've enjoyed the Summershine label that they're on. Um, but really not too um, sure what to um, what to expect from this one. So again, if you um, if you want to plump for auto haze, let me know in the comments. Uh, I sort of got this one um, knowing a tiny bit about them, um, but more than anything, knowing that uh, it's an Aussie band. To find that on vinyl in Japan is kind of rare, so um, I thought I'd repatriate it back home. And you never know, someone might be needing that one here too. Happy to have it there. All right, the next one, um, really, um, yeah, really excited to, to see it. Uh, it's always been one I've read about, but never been able to see a uh, find. So that's uh, the gist, Embrace the Herd. This is, uh, what, about 1982? It's on the Rough Trade uh, Japan label. Um, yeah, beautiful condition. I mean, all of these are pretty much in, in tip-top condition. It's incredible. You know the money you pay and um, the the vinyl condition and the cover condition that you get. Really, I I, I couldn't be happier about uh, about that there. So this one, you got the uh, Japanese insert as well. Um, Japanese rough trade. Uh, the gist the gist uh, was um, two thirds of Young Marble Giants, and we're talking sort of a real lo-fi version of. Um, of new wave in there there's uh yeah great stuff so very happy for um for the gist to be joining joining me here and well look i'm gonna keep saying that about all of them but uh, this one was a real real special one i've been on the radar for um this classic lou reed album for a long long time and um again picked up a beautiful copy this is uh, we're sort of getting up into the mid-range now about 25 Australian dollars it's an early 80s repress you've still got that classic uh, RCA label on there um, there's no Dynaflex or anything I can see on there though um, you've got the Japanese insert at the back there beautiful I mean almost almost mid condition um and and the music in the grooves to me is just flawless um really can't knock it it's heavy going um but i think it rewards uh, the heaviness with beauty um 
anyway, definitely be getting into that a bit later and probably with uh, a few of these as well. So, <laughs> next one, uh, Alopecia's uh, by Y. This is a 2008, 2008 or 2009 um, uh, indie uh, US group. Uh, there, there's touches of sort of event hip hop in there. Anyway, fantastic lyrics, um, uh, great music, and, and uh, I don't know. Sometimes I get a kind of a Beach Boys vibe in uh, just just in some of the the harmonies and things in the background in, in a very strange way though um i'm really really excited to get this as you can see it's a sealed copy um and it's an original press uh apparently they go for a bit of money now as well so uh at around about 2000 yen or 25 bucks really excited to uh pick this up and especially since i missed it at the gig back when uh, Y toured Australia with this album, so, you know, not much uh, more you could want from that. Oh my god, these are all falling down. Ridiculous. Anyway, I'll just control myself. Here we are. Next one, the debut, self-titled Rolling Stones. Again, this is, um, look, it's probably in my top two or three Stones albums. Um, if we want to start an internet fight, is that alright to do that here? Um, craps all over the Beatles debut. Uh, I think there's just far more rawness, uh, intensity, um, passion, um, and performances as well involved in, in this one. I mean, you can argue over the later albums all you like, but I think this one, the Stones are a clear winner. Um, this is a 72... Uh, Japanese repress um, you've got again the uh, Japanese lyric insert on London slash uh, King label I think it is for Japan um, the only bummer picked up a stereo and I forgot I was kind of holding out for a, a mono vinyl on that one never mind any stones that early is a good stones as far as I'm concerned so Happy, happy, happy to have it. Uh, and the next one, For Your Pleasure by Roxy Music. Um, I'm new to this one. I've got Roxy's uh, debut. Um, heard that before as well. As a big Eno fan, I've had a lot of people telling me this is kind of the one where you want to you want to hear what uh, Brian's doing. Um, and, and some have even painted it as a war between two Brian's. For the uh, controller Roxy. Well we know who won that war I suppose. But um, I'm looking forward to hear how it plays out on this album. Uh, again early 80s press I think. And we're, we're talking no more than about 30 Aussie dollars. Just um, again Japanese uh, insert. And you know beautiful beautiful condition on the vinyl. Another one I was really excited to get, and I kind of broke my Japanese presses rule, which is um, what I was focusing on while traveling, is uh, Saint Etienne. This is a original press, UK press, on the Heavenly label. Um, they're kind of a secret shame of mine, Saint Etienne. If you don't know them, it's uh, indie electro pop with kind of a lot of retro to 60s classic pop um throwbacks in there so it's it's real great classic pop songwriting but definitely filtered through that clubby early 90s um lens anyway uh, you might know if they, i think they do uh, neil young's only love can break your heart um and a fantastic version on that as well it's they've sort of looped the uh the beat on there um but it's all the, uh, the the album tracks that sort of win it for me on this one. Um, you know, Can't Sleep, Spring, um, Nothing Can Stop Us. Great album. Just a really good album. Definitely on the lighter side of things. So, um, you know, if you're feeling uh, a bit summery, a bit European summery... Um, could be a good album to have a listen to. Alright, next one 
fantastic album television second album adventure um, I'm really fond of this album um, I'm still gonna say that I'd prefer Marquee Moon but hey I'm only human um, but this one still you know I, I it's unfair to compare it to Marquee Moon this this album is kind of to me the other side of the coin that album where they showed they could play with you know um, muscularity and power and and you know um, this album has sort of got grace and finesse and, and there's almost a sort of feminine reflective uh, energy to it so uh, I think underestimate this at your peril it's this is fantastic really great to pick it up it was a original Japanese press um, and on that beautiful Electra label never get it tired of seeing that um, butterfly turn up um, I don't know if you can see the uh, condition of that vinyl but it's just pristine you know beautiful beautiful condition and and yeah look I, I think money well spent on a, um, a Japanese original pressing um, just just couldn't be happier so and the next one actually turns up to be from the same year um, and I call them a, it's a birth year record does anyone else sort of think of their things in that way their records you know the year it was made um, I'd have to say it was a good vintage if this album is a birth year record La Dusseldorf's Viva again um, this is a Japanese pressing um, Telefunken label I was really surprised that this would even turn up in Japan uh, in the year of release um, and and uh, stoked to even find a copy anyway um, I already had a copy or have a copy but I couldn't leave this there knowing that uh, sort of history beautiful con condition there's a tiny bit of uh, spots and things there but to be honest with an album like this um, it just kind of adds to the story um, this is a fantastic album probably for me the pinnacle of La Dusseldorf who um, is primarily I guess Klaus Dinger out of uh, Neu um, Kraftwerk briefly as well uh, with his brother Thomas Dinger and I hope to talk more about him one day um, but yeah this has got everything I think that uh, La Dusseldorf is, is about you know and is even better than their debut in my eyes You've got the classic side two, whole side long Cha Cha 2000, which is kind of the manifesto for for um, Klaus Dinger in general. You know, I think what he was aiming for his whole life, and in fact, he spent you know much of his uh, 90s and 2000s reprising this very one song. You know, um, but it's got it all. That song, um, yeah, really recommend you check that that track out. Um, and there's something about the sound on this album as well. It's just very, I don't know, it, it's kind of punkish, but a real new wave sound. I don't know, there's a couple of tracks that always remind me of um, Daft Punk almost and uh, and sort of Tame Impala. Um, check out uh, Geld and White Overalls um, on here as well. Just the processing of the guitars and drums blows me away I don't know it just feels way ahead of its time so check that out alright lastly um, I sh prob probably should level with you you'll, you'll see more of this later on that um, I started out being a big Pink Floyd fan so I couldn't end the uh, the trip without finding a beautiful copy of uh, Obscured by Clouds um, I think what really won it for me I mean, again, apart from the condition on these, it's just stunning. Is those rounded edges that you find on the early presses. So, yeah, just absolutely immaculate condition. Um, this was a second press, believe it or not, um, from 74. So I suppose after Dark Side hit and there was a demand for the back catalogue, this got um, a repress along with some of their other ones. Um, the uh, Odeon label, you'll see that there, um, and Harvest, just 
honestly flawless condition hard, hard to believe it's 45 years old this year or this pressing I suppose is 43 years old and again one of the other bonuses you really get with um, with the Japanese presses was this beautiful booklet 12 pages uh, I mean in pink why else of course you know um, so yeah there's some I guess extra pictures, artworks, um, yeah, essays, you got lyrics, there's even uh, sound setups, suggested sound setups in there. It's such a comprehensive kind of uh, addition that you get for the, um, for the record. And the ultimate bonus is, I don't think anywhere else got this, but uh, Japanese obscured by clouds also came with this uh, gorgeous sort of vaguely psychedelic uh, 70s artwork as well exciting really exciting to have that to well, I mean to be able to bring them all back there from Japan this this one was the most expensive and I think it set me back about forty dollars which is a cost of a, a brand new version today in Australia so um, you know 2016 repress and I think it's just you know you can't how can you knock that back it's such an underrated album or, or um, overlooked album I shouldn't say underrated but um, yeah it was showing everything they were about to uh, do on um, Dark Side and, and it was um, a much looser album to boot you know um, who would have thought Floyd could do uh, loose you know <laughs> Anyway, um, thanks for joining us everyone, really appreciate you um, tuning in, thanks for all your subscriptions as well, um, keep the comments coming, I, I love hearing what you've all got to think, and if you're making your own, um, your own videos out there, keep on doing that as well, because I'm, I'm loving what you're posting out there, there's a lot of inspirational things that people are doing, and um, I appreciate everything that everyone's doing. All right, I'm going to uh, sit back now with Grandma's little helper. And uh, in the meantime, thanks again, and uh, I'll catch up with you soon.